Hello, and welcome back to The Art of Reduction. My name is Reeve Andrews, and I'm gonna be your barber today. I'd like to give a shout out to Malone Media and Trailway Studios for the production of this film today. Today we have a great film. We're gonna do just a classic fade. Haircut that we see every single day in our shop, coming in and out, very, very classic, and mostly, you know, a lot of clipper work on the sides, ushered into some scissor work, following the natural direction of the hair. We have a great client, his name's John. John, if you come on over here today. Thank you so much for joining us today. Yes, sir. We're going to take a seat here. So like always, it's always important just to be confident when you're greeting a client, nice firm handshake, kind of start breaking that touch barrier. Um, I usually go rinse them off first. You know, it's important to do a nice little consultation and then go to the shampoo bowl, kind of get them prepped and ready, sit them back down, nice drape on them, and uh, just to get them ready. So we had a good conversation before John came on camera about what he wants today. And so here in a second, once I kind of give him the next strip, um, we will kind of talk about that consultation. So again, very important. I just kind of put my neck strip with my fingers like that, nice and flat. If you look up a little bit, John, look down a little bit, John. And um, if you notice in my videos, I really use the client's name a lot. I think that's just kind of important in business and, and creating comfort with people is, is using their name. One of the best things that you can kind of create trust with and, and connection with is actually using someone's name. It's like the one word that they actually love hearing, even though we don't really think about that. So um, I always like to use the word, you know, their, their name and sir. And like, cause at this moment, like he's my boss, you know, if they're paying me for the 30 minutes or hour that they're in my chair, he's my boss. So I need to really respect my gentleman and really take care of him. So we have some really good hair today. Like I said, we talked to John before he came in here. We're gonna do kind of a mid fade, we'll probably get down to about a half guard, maybe a no guard open at the very bottom of this haircut. Nice clean lines throughout the cut from about here up, you know, kind of use some of this length to kind of usher into some of the length on top. We're gonna go a little shorter in the crown. As we adventure forward, we're gonna gain some length and move up. And like you can just kind of tell, I think it's very important once you get your client back from the shampoo bowl, what I like to do is I really like to get them in their natural state. Like where, where does this haircut need to go? And his hair naturally kind of kicks to the right. I'm kind of dyslexic, so I think it's very important. As soon as I see them, they're walking into my station, I greet them, I, I'm seeing which way their hair goes, and I'll even say left, 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 or right, 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 a couple of times in my head, just to remember, because all of a sudden, once we start shampooing them, we towel dry them, sometimes their hair, it's like, well, shit, where does their hair go? So I always like to make sure I have a real good visual on where this hair goes. His hair's a little longer. It's about a month and a half long. So there's a little extra length on the top. So when I mentioned to him, he goes, to be honest with you, I wear my hair towards the right when it's longer, but when it's shorter, he likes to have it more towards the left. So this is why a nice consultation is very important, is just to make sure we're on the same page. So just because his hair was heading towards the right when he walked in, after a nice little consultation, he allows me to let, he lets me know, saying, hey Reeb, actually when it's shorter, our hair, I like to wear my hair a little towards the left. So that's, you know, that's what the, the power of a nice consultation. So the only way to really kind of beat this shape that he's kind of wearing in the last couple of weeks of him wearing it kind of over, let's add some water to this. And we're really gonna kind of break that, that compound of the hair and kind of change the, you know, the, the density of it and the texture of it with some water and really try to create a little bit of control. So I don't wanna get him so wet where it's dripping down his face, but we do wanna add enough water where we could kind of change this haircut up a little bit. And if you really wanna like really help your case out, having a little pre-style, um, I'm gonna use the Brilliant line from Aveda. This is called uh, damage control. Even though his hair's really not damaged, it just adds a little bit of slickness to the hair, allowing me to kind of, and it has a little, just a smidge of hold. So now when I kind of put this in, this hair is gonna kind of sit a little prettier for me. So let me go ahead and just continue this up and I'll kind of continue this consultation with you. So, like I said, we're trying to do a nice kind of mid fade. We're going to have it shorter in the crown and we're gonna work our way up. I think it'll be kind of cool if we do something special today and use a lot of feather razor today. So just like with any of my, my haircut videos, I'm gonna show you how I find his bangs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my comb right at the top of his head and right where you see this angle, where that little angle creates, you see a little space, to me, that is his, his bang. So I always like to put my finger to kind of a little mark. I'm gonna come straight across and I'm gonna mark off his bangs. To me, 
it's just one of the most important aspects of his haircut are the bangs just because it's the first thing your client sees when you, when you show them the mirror or when they open their eyes in the morning in the bathroom. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure this is a nice clean part. And I'm gonna do a classic, just little bit of a nice, use my clips here. I'm gonna come the other way just to trap it. And let's make sure there's no water coming on my client's face. Okay. So, from there, I really am going to use my feather razor quite a bit today. And then we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna go a little shorter in the crown as we adventure up gain length and we're gonna go more towards the left as his hair is shorter. So I'm even going to make sure that this little corner section, I'm actually gonna mark that off too. So I'm gonna go ahead, you'll kind of see my sectioning here in a second. Okay, gentlemen and ladies. So if you notice, keeping the good hair out of the way, focus on this top hair, especially since we're, we're kind of changing, kind of being aggressive, changing that direction, because naturally when it's longer, it kind of wants to go to, go to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have him tilt down or look up a little bit, and I'm gonna come right at that part. And I'm gonna use the finer tooth of my comb here just to have a little bit better, stronger control. And I'm gonna start really texturizing this hair down. And more importantly, I'm gonna direct it towards the left, guys. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting that hair right in between my thumb and my feather razor. There's a nice little guard on this feather razor so I could really press pretty hard without being worried of me cutting myself or cutting my clients. But it's mostly just having the stronger of a pull in, that you could apply with your thumb, kind of that backstop with your thumb to the hair. It's actually gonna cut way smoother for your client it's not gonna hurt, and it almost feels kinda of good. It's kinda of therapeutic to have a all over razor cut. So we're gonna to try to add quite a bit of texture, quite a bit of, of directing this hair towards the left, all using my feather razor. So I'm gonna continue, and what I'm doing is I'm keeping it longer up front, and as I move back towards his crown, which I'll just kind of bring him over. And more importantly, I'm also just watching which way this crown is. So if we look, this crown's kind of right in the middle where this part kind of comes. So I'm just kind of grabbing, and I'm going to follow his growth pattern all the way around this crown. I don't want any alfalfas on him. I don't want anything sticking up on him in this crown. So as long as I'm following which way this hair grows, especially in the back, we're really going to eliminate the worry of having anything too sticked up. And like I said, we're going a little shorter back here. And as we adventure forward, creating length. So I'm grabbing this hair, watching which way it grows. Why not have them tilt towards me? And if you have to add more water here in a second, you can. And again, we will get back up. And like All I'm doing is just reducing some of the bulk. So when I bring my fade into this, I don't have all this hair that I'm bringing that fade into. So it's almost like a rough draft. Yes, I'm gonna go back over it after I'm done working on the fade and kind of touching it up and blending it all together. But it's nice to have a, a shape and an idea before we even kind of get into my fade, especially if we're really doing a lot of work up top. So again, just using, if I'm point, it's kind of like, I could do the same technique if I'm kind of using my scissors to point cut. As long as I'm going in the direction of the hair, it's fine. But what I'm using my feather razor for is I'm just using the toe or the heel of it and I'm just kind of scraping it across, kind of using it as almost like, like a point cutting or like I'm slice cutting with my scissors. And it's just a kind of a fun technique. A lot of people don't use it. Um, I was trained with a lady who worked for Bumble and Bumble back in the day and they use a lot of feather razors. And I just think it's kind of a dying art. And uh, I think it just really sets me apart from a lot of the people that I cut hair around because I use a feather razor way more than most. So again, I'm not really touching his bangs, just kind of coming through here, shat cutting it, really directing this hair towards the left. I'm gonna get him back around. I'm gonna blow him off for a second. I'm gonna add a little bit more water, guys. Getting the trick with scissor work and with any type of razor work in my book, water. It's just, it's just important to have a nice glide. It helps not pull the hair, make it uncomfortable for your client when you're using a lot of razor work. 
And most importantly, I wanna have a good backstop. I really wanna make sure that the hair is nice in between my thumb and that razor blade, creating a nice, clean cut. So here in a second, I could take all these clips off. Might go ahead and just leave the front ones on, but I'm gonna take this off and I will be able to start with my fade now that we have a lot of that bulk already removed. So let's go ahead, and more importantly, I could probably just go ahead and take these off because I will touch base here in a second. And more importantly, let's go ahead, I could just, I'm just gonna change up my part a little bit. I'm just gonna come through here and take this off so I don't get into it on accident with my clippers. And we're gonna attack this haircut a little differently today. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of come over here as well. Keep my good, get my good hair out of the way. Because again, I just, I just it was a kind of a preliminary round of thus reducing that bulk. And now I could really kind of focus on this fade and I have less hair to deal with coming up into the fade. So I'm gonna attack this haircut. We're, the lowest we're gonna go is probably a no guard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack this, this haircut right in the middle. I'm gonna attack it right in the middle at first, work my way up, and then I'm gonna be able to really kind of clean it up really nice at the very, very end. So today I'm gonna to use my JRLs. I love these guys, I've been using them for a long time. I haven't really got new stuff in a while. I've really kind of a creature of habit. Once I know, I kind of stick to my guns. Once I know my gun, I like to stick with it just because when I'm in battle at work, I wanna make sure it shoots properly, aims right. So I'm gonna use my JRL today. Again, we're gonna go down to about a half guard or a no guard open. So I'm gonna actually gonna start with my two guard today and I'm gonna attack the middle of his haircut, okay? And I'm gonna have it completely closed and I'm just gonna sit here in the middle and I'm gonna start working my way around. Again, clean lines equal clean haircuts. So you'll notice I'll be able to kind of create a slight guideline for John here. And I'll slowly move him around. I'm gonna do a lot of clipper work. I'm gonna do a lot, of, I'll do some clipper over comb. I'll do some clippers with guards on it. And I'll try to do a lot of just different techniques with my clipper today to really kind of show you how I, you know, just, just again, just a classic fade. We're, we're working probably, we'll go up to about a four guard before we hit our scissor work and our razor work. And I'm gonna take it from a four down to a three, down to a two, down to a one and a half, down to a one, to maybe a half guard. And at the very, very bottom, probably that no guard um, open. So that's just kind of what my brain is telling me right now to do to John. And let's just be patient. Again, I'm a big fan of you just don't see the haircut, you have to listen to the haircut. So I could hear some hair being taken as I go through this, just cleaning up that guideline. Really love these JRLs, they, they don't get hot. I could use them damn near for this whole haircut. And uh, even when I get down to just the no guard, it's not gonna be too warm where it's irritating my client's skin. Um, they're just a great overall clipper, great, you know, four hours of run time. Um, especially, you know, here, I don't like to bring all my chargers and everything as I come to the studio. So I have no worry that I could sit here and do this haircut I could do multiple haircuts if I wanted to um, with this one clipper charge. So just being patient, knocking off the bulk. If you notice, I'm not really doing too much combing or anything. I'm just kind of allowing my clipper to do the work just to relieve, make sure I'm not overstimulating the scalp with too much, um, I call it like plastic time, right? Like my comb's plastic, my guard's plastic. So sometimes if you're really being a little aggressive with the hair, especially if they have really coarse, kind of curly hair, their hair's growing all over different directions, so you're trying to kind of manhandle it um, into the direction you want it to go. Um, I get that why you'd have to kind of sit here and kind of go over it, but he has just really good hair. That's why I kind of wanted him to show up, because most of my, cl most clients do have normal hair. You know, I mean, you have your outliers that have really tough, kind of different texture, different quality hair. But, but for the most part, most guys, you know, they're, 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 they have good hair. You know, they, it grows evenly. It has a nice little shape and pattern to it. Um, so that's why I wanted to kind of show you just what a normal haircut in my shop looks like. So um, one thing about just kind of cutting around the occipital bone here, I feel like most of the time the hair is pretty nice to you. 
Meaning, let me blow them off real quick. Meaning it's growing straight down, okay? This hair is just naturally growing down. So I don't really have to finagle my way around John's head right now. I could just literally nice little flick out, straight up, straight up, straight up, straight up. I'm not really having to really kind of be a Formula One course around the occipital bone. So it's just kind of creating a nice, just overall platform for me to sit on because anything below this guard, I'm gonna get tighter. Anything above this guard, I'm gonna get longer. But really it's when we kind of get start working around the ears, the neckline, is when I'm, I call it a pattern. I'm trying to find a pattern to follow. And once I find my pattern, I, I feel confident that I could just, you know, have some good speed with my haircut. And it's gonna, I'm gonna be able to transcend all the way down this cut really, really nicely. So once you kind of start seeing me, all of a sudden, like I said, occipital bone, I'm just going straight up and down, straight up and down, making that nice clean line. But all of a sudden, when I start getting down here, his hair kind of grows C shapes here, a little bit more aggressive here. All of a sudden, his hair is growing straight across this way, kind of curves here, curves here, curves here. And all of a sudden now we're kind of curving around and now over on this side is coming straight around his ear. So if I want to make this a clean fade, I need to tack into that, which way that hair is going. So here in a second, once I get down to my one and a half guard, my one guard, I'm really going to have to start to kind of position and move my clipper around so I'm attacking into that haircut, okay? So here in a second, I don't really hear much hair. I'm gonna go ahead and drop my two guard, jump on my one and a half guard. And since I'm transcending downward, I need to make sure my, I have a closed two guard. So once I put my one and a half guard, I need to open it all the way back up because that would be the closest length from my closed two guard. I'm at a one and a half all the way open. So that when I kind of meet into that two guard with my one and a half, it's just gonna be a really nice blend. So again, how important this lever is to barbering is so big and I can't describe it enough. I really think you could tell a well-seasoned barber by how often he's using his lever on his clipper guard, okay? So I have it all the way open, hearing some hair being taken. All I'm doing is I'm just taking it right into that two guard. I'm not going above the two guard I just used, I'm sticking right below it. And I call it a typewriter technique, meaning I'm gonna start, I'm gonna come all the way to here. I come all the way out and I hit my backstop and what I'm gonna do, I come all the way back around, okay? And I might do this two or three times just to make sure everything is good. All of a sudden I come all, and I just don't stop here, okay? See how this, this side of my clipper stops at his skin? I really, I don't wanna hit his eyebrow, so I'm gonna kinda of tilt out a little bit, but I take it all the way out to the other end of my clipper, okay? And then all of a sudden I'm, I'm gonna go a little tighter, one little click. And all I'm doing now is I'm trying to stay right below that completely opened one and a half guard, back to my typewriter, so I go all the way to the end. And it seems that his hair is so nice, I can only, I don't have to do this every, maybe, every, like I said, one time around, back and forth. And then I'm gonna get a little tighter, okay? A little tighter. And I'm just not going nearly as high. I could, I could, with every little bit, I could hear more hair being taken. So I know it's worth me just being patient. And if you need to go over it a couple of times, that's fine. Again, his hair is kind of being very kind to me, meaning it's growing just straight down. So I don't really have to angle my clipper too much. All the way out, a little tighter. And I'm just gonna keep coming up. And like, don't be afraid to like go start at the very bottom, but just as long as I don't go any higher than what I want. I could start as low as I want, but I just can't go as high as that two, one and a half guard all the way open or that two guard right now. And here in a second, when I get to about a one and a half or one guard, I like to do just a quick little lineup and then continue my fade down. Because if I feel like if I get too tight here, I have really nothing to line up. So I, that's what I like to kind of do, just like again, another preliminary kind of lineup. Because once I finish my fade, I'll go back through and really make sure that lineup is clean. But again, I want something for me to be able to kind of tap into. So, and again, if you have to start moving your client's head around to make this better for you,
please do. You're the one who's in control. The more control that you could showcase your client with good positive touch, with positioning their head and their ear and their neck so that you're giving the best and are getting and giving the best haircut you can, your client feels you being in control. And I swear it's that control and that confidence in yourself that really allows your client to relax. And again, that's one of the most important aspects of the service is how can I get my client to relax? He had a busy day, you know, work, has to go home and, and provide for the family. You know, this is his 30 minutes of solitude. You know, I, if I could give him a really beautiful haircut and also 30 minutes of peace, um, they're gonna come back to you and, and they're gonna really enjoy your time. So I'm at, my, I'm at a completely closed now, one and a half. I can hear some hair being taken, so let's just be patient. Watching which way his hair grows, just attacking into it to ensure a really, really clean haircut. You could hear that hair. Okay, I feel confident that I could go down to a one guard and then do my little lineup real quick, so that's what I'd like to do before I go down to um, which I believe I'm going to go down to about a, a no guard open is my goal. So now let's go ahead, drop my one and a half. So I'm transferring into my one guard now. And again, most importantly, I'm transcending down my fade. So what do I do to make it as close to that closed one and a half guard? I just open it all the way up. Okay. And again, I'm going to, let's go ahead and just start on this side, start low. And my main objective guys is don't go all the way up too far into that one and a half just really kind of stopping right below that one and a half guard closed. And as I get lower, I'm gonna to have to start watching which that pattern I'm talking about. His hair kind of has a little C shape right here. So you're gonna start seeing my clippers start to move instead of just up and down. I'm really gonna to have to start watching which way that hair grows to really create a really beautiful fade down my client. So his hair grows really aggressively here kind of comes up on his neck, watching his hair. I can start moving and positioning his head to really best benefit myself. And again, it's still that typewriter technique, meaning I'm gonna to go to the one side of his head and come back, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be this perfect line, okay? You might have to come a little lower and kind of, but as long, most importantly, as long as I'm not going any higher than that one and a half watching which way his hair grows. I use, especially since I'm not trying to create any more guidelines, I really try my hardest to use the toe or the heel of my clipper. I'm not really sitting too flat on it because I don't want to create any more guidelines. But as long as I have a nice little flick out, I really eliminate that, that opportunity of putting in a hard line. Um, so I'm just kind of watching which way his hair grows. His hair grows really aggressive around his ear, straight up on the sideburn. His hair kind of grows straight here. So what am I doing? I'm attacking into it. Attack, attack, attack. As I get tighter, I'm going to start really moving his scalp around. It's called tauntness. So I'm creating some tauntness to really allow my clipper to really get in there and have something to grab onto. And most importantly, guys, I don't want to be moving his scalp, okay? I don't like, like if his, he has a pretty nice tight scalp, but so I don't want to be pushing the fade. I just want my thing to be gliding right over his scalp, grabbing only hair. But if I'm pushing too hard where his scalp's kind of moving up and down, we're gonna have an issue and it's called pushing the fade. So we don't really want to push the fade. If you find yourself pushing the fade, that means you're maybe going too fast or you're applying too much pressure. I would much rather you kind of move the scalp and make it tight first, so that scalp doesn't really move on you. So again, I'm taking them all the way over. His hair grows really aggressively around his ear. It's, it's not always about pulling up. Sometimes it's about pulling to the side, pulling over uh, to create that tightness that you need. So I'm slowly tightening my clipper guard and I'm gonna run her back around. You could hear hair being taken, so let's just be patient. Patient, patient, patient. 
watching which way his hair grows, listening to his haircut, aggressively around the ear. And if you want, I mean, I, I even start doing a little circular pattern, especially when I'm getting a little tighter and there's a lot, I mean, his hair is kind of growing all over the place around the neckline. Having a little circular pattern, either clockwise, counterclockwise, even better if one way you're doing it clockwise and you come, you know, back around doing counterclockwise, that's really going to allow, you know, you're really kind of cross-checking with your fade. Um, so, again, I really, if you notice now, I'm really kind of starting to, create a nice little circular pattern as I get lower and lower into this fade. And that's just gonna ensure that I have a nice, clean, crispy looking cut. Everything looks really nice, a little tighter. It's actually all the way tight right now. So let's just be patient with this. I'd much rather just do, I don't wanna have to jump from guard to guard. I really don't wanna have to go back to my one guard right now. So it's better just to really be patient and make sure we're getting the job done with our tools while we have it. To, to have to jump back and forth, back and forth, um, I feel like I get lost in the sauce a little bit. I might kind of get off my game or I have a blueprint of what I, I want to happen. So if I have to like constantly go back and, and touch things up, um, which is fine, I, I encourage you to have, if you see something you don't like, go, take some steps back before you move on, I get that. But if we can eliminate that opportunity, I think it's very wise. So if you could still, like I said, you can still hear hair being taken on a closed one. Let's just be patient, guys. Again, we're as humans, we're lazy. We want we want the easiest, quickest route. We were we're just kind of designed like that, and it's a it's a great thing and a bad thing at the same time. So if we're when it comes to work and being precise and trying to create some art it's better to not listen to our quick brain and really just try to do a really fluent and efficient job when we can and be, be diligent and be disciplined. So, so far I'm really liking what I'm seeing. He has these little bitty indentions right here. So I'm, I, if I like, if I go flat into where, like there's a little concave, you know, it's like it kind of, all of a sudden if you went straight up, you'd almost miss it, right? And like, so if I keep this flat, it's not really getting into that little concave area. So I'm going to just use the toe or the heel to really get in there and make that look even, okay? And there's usually, if he has one on one side, there's usually one on the other. It doesn't always have to be, they're not always perfect. Someone's a little higher, someone's a little lower. That's one thing about human beings, we're not, we're not symmetrical, you know, we're really, but as a barber, that's, our, that's what we're trying to create the illusion that we are. So that's one thing I'm always trying to do is try to make my client's hair and face and everything look symmetrical. I think there's just beauty in that. And if you could really kind of create that look for your guy, it, it's, it's, it's magical. And, and again, they're really going to notice a difference and get compliments on their haircuts. And it's just because you took the time to really make sure everything looks nice and even. I have my one guy, I'm going to open it back up a little bit. And just touch it back up. Like I said, I, I even have to go back and redo some things. That's okay. But at least I didn't have to go back and put my guard on. I just had to move, I just had to move my lever up and down to create this. So okay, I'm really liking that. I'm gonna go ahead. I am gonna move to my half guard now, but before that, I'm going to clean up his neckline. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just put my half guard on and open it get it all ready for myself. Let's go ahead and blow him off. Close your eyes, John. What I like to do is I like to use a, a very light hold hairspray and I'm just gonna just kind of apply it on the neckline. I like to, when, it, when I'm spraying anything, I always like to guard their eyes, even though their eyes are probably closed, but it just shows respect. Maybe they do open it on accident and you don't want to spray them right in the face. And all of a sudden, I'm going to do the same thing over here, guys. I just put my hand straight up and I could just kind of hit like that. And I feel confident that it's not going to get in his eyes or, or anything. So from there, I'm using my Tori Hanzo trimmers. I really love these things. Um, I'm going to grab a bristle brush now. So you could use like a forehead brush or a little bristle brush. And I'm just going to comb that neckline out. And that little bit of hairspray is going to kind of, I call it tack. It's going to tack that hair down. 
and it's gonna allow me something, my trimmer to really have something to grab onto when I do that lineup, okay? I always like to start, it doesn't matter where I start on the side, it's, I always start in the same spot and I'm, it's gonna create the C shape around the ear here and I'm gonna draw my bar down and I'm gonna kind of work my way around. So I, what I like to do here, guys, best way to kind of see where his air, hair or his hairline should not go in above, I just push the ear. So his hair kind of grows quite a bit below where that ear goes. So I don't think I'm gonna take it up that high. So I'm just gonna be a little patient here. I'm just gonna kind of flick that ear down and I'm just gonna snap a line, okay? Just using the toe or the heel of my trimmer. And I'm just gonna go to the top of the ear and I'm gonna flip and I'm gonna meet in the middle. I'm gonna do this a couple times, just really creating a nice clean line, start at the top, come back. If you notice, I always kind of put, a, I always kind of put my finger right on their chin. I don't want him to actually nod down or move his head, so just have a nice little touch here. Keeps him nice and straight and parallel, especially when I'm trying to drop a line on a sideburn. Like if he's looking down and I try to be straight, when he looks up again, it's gonna have an angle. So as long as I kind of have a nice little touch on him right here, I can control his head there. And I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth, back and forth here. Again, it's all about the detail, guys. Your money, your major tips, your clients really liking what you do. It's all about the little detail work. So why not? I already have my trimmer. I'm around the ear. There's sometimes a little peach fuzz. He doesn't have too much, but just a little bit of ear detail while I'm here shows that I care. More importantly, I'm trying to do stuff that the guy up the road's not doing. Here in a second, I'm gonna come here and I'm going to push. Now I'm gonna kind of draw this a little bit more, creating this C shape here. If you notice, I'm pulling the skin nice and tight, following the natural shape of this. Not, again, I'm not the biggest fan of changing up someone's hairline in the front. I try, to, I, I try to enhance it, if anything, but I'm really not trying to change it too much. Again, this is called framing the face. With any expensive painting that you get commissioned to do, you're not gonna just put it in some cheap ass frame. We're gonna have a nice frame with it. So this is very important to just create a nice frame in the front. It's, again, it just really showcases the face when he opens his eyes. You know, to have a nice clean frame is very important. To me, there's kind of three different levels of of sideburn one thing i naturally go to where does his jaw kind of connect to his skull and so you can kind of naturally feel that on a lot of guys and you know usually it's about a finger width wide and really kind of below in the middle i don't want to go too high into that so i just kind of dropped it right where that jaw line kind of connects to the skull and it just to me that's just a classic spot and that's where his naturally was so now i'm gonna come back here and now I'm gonna follow this line that I created straight down. Okay. I'm not trying to create my bevel right here yet. I'm just going straight down. I could push into this just a little bit. You could flip your trimmer to get a little cleaner here. Okay, I'm gonna flip them around. And the trick is just to do the same thing that you did on the other side. So I'm gonna kind of flip his head around, flip that ear, and I'm gonna draw my line. And I'm gonna stop at the top, come around, come up a little higher, around. His hair kind of goes real aggressively, so I need to kind of attack it on this edge this way. Nice control all the way around. Again, I'm right-handed, so it's hard for me to have my left and do this. So if I could just, I'm just gonna grab him up here to make sure his head's nice and straight. Find that jaw. Snap my line. I'm gonna push. Now I'm gonna draw my C shape. I'm gonna pull forward just a little bit. Create some tightness. Come 
creating that frame. Why not go back over it? I'm gonna do my little ear detail. Again, if I forget to do the ears, it's it, your, your client feels it. Like he's gonna feel lopsided almost because you did that little touch and that little energy around the ear. If I would miss this, he's gonna feel that. So it's very important, whatever you do to one side, we really need to make sure we do to the other, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just taking this line that I created right here, and I'm going straight down. I think it's not wise to start here and try to go up because maybe you might go too in, you might go too out, but as long as I follow that natural line over here, I just feel always confident that both sides are gonna look pretty even and it's gonna be a very natural neckline. One thing I like to do now is I would like to look straight on at him and I just want, I'm gonna grab him like this and I'm just gonna make sure looking straight on at my client that our sideburns are good, which they are. Now that I'm, I'm up front, right, I saw my trim in my hand, why not do a little bit of eyebrow detail? Again, with my gentleman, I don't try to change the shape. I'm not here to change the shape of John's eyebrows. I'm just trying to get all the bad hairs away from his eyebrows. So um, a lot of, I like to kind of push away or push down or push away into the eyebrow just so I don't accidentally like slip and all of a sudden we don't have any eyebrows. I look terrible. But he actually has really nice eyebrows. I'm gonna go on the other side. I don't like kind of, I don't like coming all the way around to do something just better just to come on the other side. Perfect. And one thing I don't like to do is I don't like to make this line yet. Okay, so I did the bars down. I could kind of clean up the neck a little bit more here, yes. But I'm not gonna really make this line. I'm gonna just fade that out. I'm gonna just taper that out today. So I'm not making any line right there. That looks really good. Anytime I change tools, I like to blow my client off. I like a clean, it's a clean canvas. And guess what? My Clipper's already prepped with my half guard open. Let's go ahead and kind of start on this one side. Again, main objective here is not go any higher than my one guard closed. And my other objective is to follow my pattern. And if I follow my pattern, I think I'm gonna really create a cool haircut for John and we'll be happy campers. So again, let's move this ear out of the way. If you notice now, let's say I kept it real flat, right? Well, look how high my clipper is. You know, it's damn near all the way up into that, that one and a half or two guard if I have it flat. So what I'm doing is I'm really tilting that, that clipper out using the toe or the heel to stay super low in my fade. If I kept this nice and flat, I'm gonna bring it too high and all that work we did is gonna go down the drain. So you, if you need to hold it like a pencil or kind of change your grip, um, especially with, depending on which way you're going, sometimes now that I'm, I'm tilting it, I could do this, but look how much like energy my wrist is doing. So I'm just gonna hold it at a different angle like this, like a pencil almost. And I really don't even have to use my wrist anymore. And as long as I'm really tilted out, it's gonna be perfect. watching which way his hair grows. Here in a second, when I get to the back, yes, I could go back to just a classic hold on my clipper. I'll have him look down a little bit. Watching which way his hair grows. And now here, I'm gonna do is I just have to, now I'm just tilting it out, having it tilted out really far so I don't go too high in that fade. Following my pattern. Good positive touch. Doing my typewriter technique all the way back. Really aggressive around here, maybe a little circular patterns. Positioning my client's head to best benefit myself as well as the haircut. Changing my grip a little bit on my clippers. Guess what? One, one, little, one little notch tighter and do it all over again. So let me, I'm just gonna show you in real time. I'm not gonna talk much here in a second. And I'm gonna finish out the bottom of this with this half guard. And you'll kind of see me in just like real time.
a little tighter now. I'm listening to the hair, so I could hear some hair being taken, so I just need to be patient. All the way tight. I could hear hair being taken, so I need to be patient. Actually, I'm not all the way tight. Now I'm all the way tight. So let's go back here. Every little notch counts, guys. I, I can't I can't stress enough how every little bit of wiggle room on that guard level is what creates these really beautiful fades and these tapers. And in and, and my book, is what allows my haircuts to grow out so nice is that it is really cascading down with his, his head shape, you know? And so it's like, I just know this haircut's going to grow out really nice for my client. And it's, I don't think a good haircut is one that looks good when they leave the shop. It's the one that looks good in four weeks when they have a job interview and they can't get in with you and they can still manage their hair to get the job done. I, I really try my hardest to come up with a haircut and a, a style that my guy can at least get a month out of. You know, I feel like that's fair. If you're, you're giving a haircut that your gentleman can live with for a month, you're doing great. But after five, six, seven weeks, I don't care how good of a haircut you put on someone, it's going to lose its shape. Hair, and I always like the quote, hair wins. Over time, hair will always win. So now I'm taking my guard off. I'm back to a no guard. Remember I mentioned I was trying to get down to a no guard. I am going to hit it with a bit of cool care just to cool that blade down, even though it's not even that hot. Um, I still want to keep my client comfortable. All the way open now, okay? And I'm going to keep this super low, okay? And again, I might go a little kind of tight on this, but let's just stick to this how we mentioned. I mean, I don't want to take my client too short without talking to him. So we, we our consultation said I was going to do an open no guard. So I think I could sit here and, and do a lot of just pretty haircuts and not have to go any tighter, not even touch that lever. Just keep it open and really just kind of finish this fade out. So I'm just going to be patient. If I have to do a little detail work, kind of get up and kind of clean up some of these dark spots, just do it. I could hear hair being taken, so let's just be patient. Tilting that client's head to best benefit myself. Just peaceful, relaxing. As much as there's an art to everything, there's an art to your conversation that you have your client with. There's an art to knowing when to be quiet and just kind of focus on the haircut, allow your client just to sit there in silence and enjoy the energy of your shop or your, or your, your studio. Um, and it's just really kind of feeling your client's energy, you know, if they're not really talkative, you know, then you really don't need to talk too much. You know, you don't want to just sit in awkward silence the whole time. But, you know, if he doesn't want to talk, why would I be asking him all these personal questions or like keep asking him questions, even though I could tell the gentleman probably just got out of a hectic interview or meeting or something. And he just wants to kind of be a little patient and, and chill out for a second. So, again, there's an art to the whole service just as much as the haircut on just reading the energy of your client and making sure you know you're you're kind of molding your energy to best kind of make your client feel good and comfortable and give him what he needs and again if you do all that your money goes up like your tips go up your your the quality of your haircut goes up you know and getting booked out is easier and you know how much money you're making every week cuz you're you're booked every week you know and 
So there's just this, this you can make it however you, you could be like I said there's there's engineers who build skyscrapers and there's engineers who build trailers and I just I've always wanted to be a barber who really puts in some extra work and, and goes all out. So let's blow them off. Again, I like to create my foundation before I build my house. A good foundation leads to a pretty house, even though I kind of did a little rough draft on the roof, yes, and I kind of cleaned some stuff up, but let's really kind of finalize the, the foundation. I'm gonna get my tightest trimmer I have is by JRL. So kind of the same situation that I did with my Hattori Hanzos. I'm just gonna go back over and just get this a little tighter a little cleaner even though a lot of my job is done I know this trimmer will just get a little tighter and make this haircut pop a little bit more I'm just gonna hit the very bottom of this sideburn taper down just a little bit more using the corners clean around the ear touch up the ear coming straight down now I feel confident enough I could come up into and kind of create this little bevel look even though there's pretty skinned out at the very bottom of this. Okay. Same thing here. Cleaning up my C-shape. Touching up the ear. Cleaning up the bottom of that sideburn just like the other side. Just hitting the corners, the very bottom of this. Okay, push, clean, push, beautiful. So I'm gonna continue my transition down. I'm gonna undrape them just for a second. I'm gonna take off my neck strip for a second. I'm gonna hit them back with a little bit of air control. I'm gonna take my feather razor, same tool that I started doing a lot of the energy on top with. I could just kind of come through here Again, very light. I'm not bare handling this. This thing could damn near fall out of my hands at any time. Just letting the weight of my tool almost do all the work here. Just hitting the very bottom of this. So far this is looking excellent. I could do a little bit of work around the face too. Especially you cosmetologists who don't have a barber license, who can't really use a straight razor in your state. This is a great alternative to kind of create a straight razor feel and a straight razor look without having to use a straight razor. I love cleaning up the, this little, a lot of my gentlemen, myself included, have a little peach fuzz right by the eye and I love cleaning that up. I just feel like if I get that little peach fuzz right off the eye here, um, I feel like the sun, the rays of the sun come and they hit that peach fuzz, and I swear it's just like a natural kind of blocker. It kind of just kind of dulls the skin a little bit, dulls the light. So if I could kind of take that and get it straight skin, when that sun hits this part of his face, it kind of, I'm not saying it's like creating a, like a, it's blinding him with the sun, but I feel like I, you feel a little bit more awake. There's a little bit more like light going into my eyes, it feels like when I get really cleaned up. My barber takes the time to clean up around my eyes like that. And uh, with him being a great basketball player, we need all that, all that good eyesight as possible. And I just feel like when I cut all my basketball players for the IU team, I always clean up this eye just because I want all the light coming in for depth perception and just to feel awake, you know, and to kind of feel that, that air kind of around the eyes. It's just a sense that really creates, a, 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 I don't know, you just, it's just a really nice feeling. So take the time to do a little eye cleanup around here with your razor. And more importantly now, I'm gonna jump on my foil shaver. I always, anytime I use this on skin, I'm always using my Sterling's Gold. It smells very good. And I'm gonna finish this off. And I'm gonna come down. Anywhere I use my strip, my little feather razor, I'm gonna use this just to kind of final touch everything. Even the ear, neck, ear, 
jawline. I like to use the back of my hand to kind of feel for any abrasion or any kind of stubbliness that I missed. That looks awesome. What I love about these Babyliss foil shavers is they have a little built-in UV light. So every time I put my lid back on, that UV light or sanitizes and cleans my blade. So Babyliss, you guys are doing great with these. Thank you so much. I'm gonna go ahead and redrape them up with a new neck strip because now we get to kind of start working our way up our house. Now that we have our foundation, I think that's looking really, really, really good. Okay, guys, so a lot of little detail work, but you can already tell how pretty this is starting to look and how much, you know, we already have a lot of our work kind of done up top. So we're really kind of making our way quite nicely here. So let's go ahead and work. I call it now we're working on the walls of our house. We have our foundation. Now we need to kind of work on the walls. So I mentioned how I was going to do some clipper over comb today. And I think I'd like to start that actually here in a second. So I remember I did my two guard close. That's, that was our initial guideline. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back on my two guard and I'm going to start working my way up until I start using some clipper over comb action. So again, I had it completely closed. Why not just start there to kind of get my rhythm again? And with this situation, every little notch, I'm going to get higher and higher and higher. Okay. So I have it closed. And every little time I come around, I'm going to go a little higher in my fade. Nice flick out. Again, his hair is really nice right here. I don't have to really do all kind of crazy maneuvers with my, my clipper. I could just come roll straight into it. And this is, this is nice. Kind of combing that hair into the direction I want. Nice positive touch. A little bit more open. And remember, I think I said I was going to go to a four guard. So that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do some clipper over comb, I believe, um, to really kind of blend and, and create a nice shape moving into that textured razor cut that we started. Okay, guys? All the way open now. Just constantly coming a little bit higher, not by much, just a little bit higher every single time we come through this. Again, I'm, I'm, I, I don't wanna have to put this guard back on, so I went all the way closed again. Just kind of making sure it's all perfect. I don't hear much hair being taken, so I feel confident on moving through. So now I'm putting on a three guard. And I remember I had the two guard all the way open. So what's the what's the closest to my two and a half, my two open is my three guard closed, okay? So now again, all I'm doing is just coming a little bit higher in that two guard open. Nice, clean flick out. Being patient. Coming straight off his skull. I'm not rounding in. I'm coming straight up. If not, I'm actually kind of dipping out a little bit. A little more opened. Still doing my little typewriter technique where I come all the way around in these bands. Coming around. All the way, no, not all the way open, a little bit more open. Be careful with your flick out. Some, some, sometimes if you're flicking too much, you're just kind of bopping your guy in the head kind of hard and it's not really that comfortable. So just make sure you have a nice, smooth, Flick, you're not really 
every time you kind of go back to start touching a scalp with your clipper, you're not just bopping them too hard. Um, and that's just, again, back to being present, you know, just being present. I feel like when I was younger and kind of dumb in, in barbering, it's when I'm thinking about, oh, what party am I going to or what am I having for lunch or my girlfriend broke up with me or, you know, my dog's sick or my kid, you know, like you start thinking negative or you start thinking outside, outside the haircut. That's where all the issues happen. That's where we get lost in the sauce. We kind of forget where we are. We're not being too diligent and disciplined and, and being detailed. Um, it really is very important just to stay present in the haircut, constantly thinking of what you're doing next, listening to the haircut, and uh, not thinking negative. Um, I read something that said that it, when it comes to positive thought and negative thought, only negative thought is is capable of you in an eternal loop of negative. Like you, when you're thinking negative, you could look, think negatively about the situation for hours and hours and hours and days and days and days. But positive thought, it doesn't allow you to do that. You could win a good basketball game or do something great, but your positive thinking is going to be like, you know what, Reeve, what's next? We need to think of what's next. We can't just dwell on this positive thought because we have something else coming and there's something better. But if I'm just thinking negative the whole time, we could sit in that for years, guys. And this, that's just not what it's about. And what I realize is when I'm thinking negatively or that's when I really mess up haircuts. I start dropping combs and not being present. So if you are going to think anywhere besides the haircut, think positively. And I, and I promise you it will, it will help you. But if we're thinking negative or thinking about you know, what we could do other than what the haircut is, Maybe you should think of a different job and think and get out of there and go home and deal with what you got to deal with and not be behind the chair for that day. Because if we're thinking elsewhere, we're not really doing a good service for our client. So just my little tidbit of energy, thought and process. So, again, I'm just coming a little, a little longer with my clipper guard starting to come in. You could already tell them I have to do this, how much thicker this little side is over here. So I definitely feel like that's where I'm going to do a lot of my clipper over comb. I'm all the way open now. Coming straight off his skull. I'm going to close my guard down just to kind of double check everything through here. Now I'm moving to my four guard. This, again, this is all my consultation. I remember I'm going to go from a four guard all the way down to a, a no guard open. And I'm going to stick with that so far. And I feel, and I, I love it when like I can kind of see the picture I want before I'm even close to it. And don't get me wrong, maybe I need to go to a five guard or maybe he wants me to go to a no guard close. I get that. But, you know, he could have that. He could tell me that once he sees the haircut. But it's nice to kind of stick to your blueprint and have another consultation after you achieve the look you were initially going for. And more importantly, it's even cooler when it just, it looks good, you know, and you're like, hell yeah, that was like, I had the vision before I even started. And uh, that just, that should be a confident booster for yourself. So really quickly, I could already tell this four is not doing much because as I come straight up, that hair is really not touching. So that's where I'm going to have to start doing my kind of clipper over comb technique to really put this into shape. So here in a second, I'm going to drop this. I'm going to anytime I switch tools, now I'm going to start not really switching tools, but I'm kind of switching techniques now. So I'm going to move them back over here. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I might redo my, my clips here in a second. Again, I don't want to grab good hair. I want to keep just all the hair I want to work with. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and create a better line. As, as you're moving the head around and he's moving, I'm twirling him, you know, those clips could kind of naturally fall. So we're gonna get all this good hair out of the way. Okay, so now 
This is called the moneymaker comb. It's kind of a flat comb, kind of wider at one end. Um, for tapering, it's nice to have kind of a, maybe a thicker one. But since we're, this is kind of, this is just a nice Johnny B classic comb. And import, more importantly, I'm gonna push towards his face. I don't wanna sit here and have this hair go back. Cause I, when I push this hair back, it kind of gets, it seems like it rounds out more. I, I wanted his hair to kind of be sleek. And his hair, we're now we're pushing this hair towards the left, you know, so I'm trying to direct it towards the left. So I like to use my wall magic clips for clipper over comb. I just think that my JRLs are for like really tight, tight hair. So these are just, gives me, they're a little softer, you know, so it gives me a little bit more wiggle room. And if you really want to play it safe, you could have it like three fourths of the way open. Um, if you have it completely closed, that's going to be a really aggressive cut. So sometimes just to kind of soften it up, I'll just open it up a little bit. I'm going to start in the back and I'm just hitting the, trying to create this round, trying to eliminate the roundness through here. And I'm going towards the face. Anything below that, I could just do a classic. This little brim, I really want to come towards the face. And really all I'm trying to do is just create that, just that last little bit of blend from my clipper. I might have, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm going to get on some scissors and really kind of dial all this in. But again, I'm just really trying to create that shape right now. And I'm just gonna be picky with myself. I could blend this out just a little bit more. Okay, whatever you do to one side, we're gonna go do to the other. This side is not nearly as thick as that side. And what's great is I'm right-handed, so it's a lot easier for me to kind of move this towards his head. So just a little detail work as I kind of climb up into this. And I'm just kind of hitting the corners, just trying to make this not so rounded out on him. Okay, so far. This is looking really good. I could do a little, a little dark right here. There's a little blend I could work on. So let's go ahead and do, touch that up real quick. Okay. I want to, I'm just being picky on myself. I feel like I could blend this out just a little bit better. So I'm actually going to go trimmer over comb because this is a little tighter. Boom. A little dark right here. This is called detail work, my fade. So I'm just gonna go through and just do a little bit of detail work for John. It's a little dark right here. Might be able to get that with some texturizing shears, but let's just try it with some trimmer over comb work first. Okay. Just being picky with ourselves. This side looks really good. Let's just go and just make sure though. Awesome guys. Okay, so now we get to have, kind of get back into our cut up top. 
I'm gonna jump on my really big eight and a half inch Tori Hanzos here, and I'm just gonna come straight up. And I'm, again, I'm just looking for any kind of corners, trying to round this out for our gentleman. I'm gonna drop my guard clips here. I'm gonna add some more damage control. And really, I'm just gonna work on the corners and then I'll jump back on my feather razor to kind of texturize all this out. So again, I'm just hitting my corners. They're a little thick right through here. And it just kind of goes to show how versatile you guys have to be. I mean, there's some clippers who, don't get me wrong, are really great with clipper work and trimmer work and razor work, but you put a scissor in their hair, their hand, and it's like they don't they never held it before. Or there's people who are really good with scissors, but you give them a tight fade and they're just kind of scared to death. So I think it's important to kind of know all the arts when it comes to hair cutting because I mean, it's, it's 2024, guys. You know how much different types of hair and ethnicities and culture and bloodlines that are coming out now? So it's like there's there's so much new hair coming where we kind of need to know a little bit of, of how to cosmetology. We need to know a little bit of barbering um, just so we could give every guy who sits in our chair a, a good haircut, you know? So you don't want to kind of limit yourself to, to only knowing how to do a couple haircuts. That's one thing I, I really pride myself with. And more importantly, being, you know, I, my, my shop's in Bloomington, Indiana. So we have a very wonderful Big Ten College campus who brings people from, from Haiti to Singapore to London, from, from Miami to New York to California to South Africa. I mean, there's people from all over the world who come to this small town, this college town. And one of the first things people need when they move somewhere new, guys, is either they need a doctor, a mechanic, or a barber. And by, hopefully, the first thing they really need will be a barber. Um, so, it, like, especially if you're in a college town or a big city with a lot of different ethnicities walking around, which is what I think the world should be like, it's just good to kind of know all of all of these different techniques. So, most importantly, we could feed and put food on our table and also give these guys really great haircuts. So... Remember, as I move forward, I'm trying to gain and keep length, creating texture, changing his hair pattern a little bit by going towards, going heading towards the left now. Instead of when his hair is nice and long, it goes to the right. I'm gonna add just a little bit of water. Anytime I'm using scissor work. And what's crazy, what's great is that just that base of texture we created with our, our, our feather razor, like, we can't forget that that's we we kind of created the base to have texture in this haircut because that was the first thing we kind of attacked. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of hit some of these wispy ends. Oh, why not? Why not? I could use the feather razor right here. Again, I'm not pressing too hard. I don't want to irritate his skin or create little red lines on his forehead. Corner is going to be a little heavy over here, so let's go attack it. Aggressively moving that hair into the direction I want it to go in. Getting a little shorter as I transition back to the crown. As I move forward, I'm getting longer, directing this hair into the direction I want it to go. Direct, direct. 
as I get closer to the final touch. I call it, the reason I call it the art of reduction because at first it's just ripping hair. We're just ripping off a bunch of hair. There's, there's yes, there's some rhyme and reason to it, but I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm reducing thousands of hair at a time with the clipper, with the razor. But as we kind of slowly dwindle down, slowly start finishing up the haircut, it goes from cutting thousands of hairs to me looking just for the one bad hair, just those couple bad hairs that are kind of not in place. And that's what I, I love about this technique of cutting hair is that as we get closer and closer to perfection, it's less and less work. There's less and less hair. I'm not, I'm looking for the couple bad hairs and not all the bad hairs. And I just kind of find that to be fun. So I'm gonna go ahead, start, reduce, let's, let's take some of the moisture out of his hair now. And then I, you've seen my haircuts. I like to use the blow dryer and kind of cut into it. So I'm gonna try to get this hair as dry as possible for a second, kind of see what it'll look like in its natural state. Again, I'm using my, I'm pushing the hair, even with my blow dryer, I'm pushing and directing this hair in the direction I want. I'm gonna jump on my 21 tooth of Tori Hanzo's and I'm gonna use my blow dryer and I just kind of use this technique to kind of showcase any bad hairs. If there's any hair is not going with the flow of the air and kicking out and, and, and looking, looking just like they shouldn't belong, guess what? They shouldn't belong. So I'm just going to use this blow dryer to kind of push and, and showcase any negative hairs. Again, shorter in the crown. so good in my book is I like just kind of getting to the same where I, I my anxiety could kind of go down we're getting to the end of the cut things are looking good you know there's just good energy um, I, I love that part so I'm just gonna I just kind of velcro them up there's just these little bitty baby hairs that again they're not really part of the haircut I'm not I'm not nowhere near am I trying to change his hairline at all I'm just going to try to get some of these little bitty baby hairs that just again I'm just trying to frame the face I have such nice clean lines everywhere why not just try our hardest to get some of these little bitty baby hairs and the best way to make sure you're not like I'm just going to kind of dig in and dip up so I'm just coming up out up out I'm not really changing his hairline just clean up these just one or two little bitty hairs. Boom. Boom. Love it. Okay. Just as, again, it's, it's the littlest of things, guys. The littlest, bittiest of details. So what I like to do now is I'm going to put a little bit of, not the product I'm going to style them out with, just a, a kind of a lighter product so I can kind of, kind of see what it looks like with product. And more importantly, I'm going to kind of cut into this product. So... One of my favorite products to use kind of at the very end as I'm, I'm really getting down to the last bit is a thickening paste by Aveda. Again, I feel like I could put this product in. It's going to create just a little bit of hold, a little bit of texture, but most importantly, my scissors could cut right through it. So I'm just going to add this product. And now I'm really going to finalize this cut and see if there's any... I'm gonna come back into this point cut. Again, the product is just to showcase flaws. Kind of give me a little 
it just kind of shows me areas that I might have missed. It might be a little longer. And um, again, people love it when I kind of like when I kind of and I'm really I don't know how I'm I'm putting it into stone when I'm kind of cutting into this product. I know when he puts product in his hair, it's exactly how it's going to look. So I really encourage you guys to find a nice light product to kind of put into your guys and cut into it. Look straight at me, John. Thank you. Guys, this is looking excellent. Let's do one more blow off of them real quick. I'm gonna put some final product in them. One thing I like to do before I, 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 I kind of blow off the hair from the cape, make sure it's on the cold setting. I just kind of lift up, put this underneath of them for a second, and then rip it off. It allows, so if any hair does fall, it's gonna go away from them. So we're not putting hair back on his clothes. I'm gonna put a little bit of product, you should relax there. It's nice to kind of clean up our guys. A lot of my clients are going back to work. They're going, you know, they're going out to dinner, they're going on a date, they're going to a meeting. Um, I really, I don't know how to describe this. Like I, I'm trying to cut editorial hair with every client. I, every client that walks out of my, my, my chair, I believe is going to go do something important right then. Like they're almost like they're going to a photo shoot as soon as they leave because I know personally that's the best their haircut's gonna look because I'm the one who styled them out. I just cut it. So for him to look perfect when he leaves and goes out into the business, that's how I know I'm gonna gain more clients because of how good he looks right then and there. So just to have, have pride in your work, make sure it's nice and clean. I'm gonna hit him with a little bit of aftershave, make him smell good. And then my final product I'm gonna to use today is the Layrite Cement Clay. Kind of in the same world as that Aveda thickening paste, but again, this is a little bit more tackier, a little bit more in stone than that um, thickening paste. I really want to, want to cut into um, this product. So I always kind of put my product on it the exact same way. I, I kind of create, I call it an exterior shell starting in the back. If you notice, I'm really not working the product into the hair, I'm working the product onto the hair. And then once I feel like that, that exterior shell is even is when I will start to kind of manipulate this haircut. See one little hair I don't like. Blow them off one more time. So pretty crazy to think his, you know, when he came in, his hair was all towards the right. And now look how beautiful this cut looks, having it go towards the left now. I think we really got to stay true to our original blueprint and our original consultation. And what I bet when I show this gentleman in the mirror, he's really gonna like it. So thank you so much for watching The Art of Reduction. And we hope that you guys are learning something each and every video. Stay tuned, we have a lot more coming up. And thank you Trailway Studios, and thank you Henry Malone, and thank you John for being a great client today. You guys have a great week, thank you so much.